Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today I'm going to take a walk around the Lamar GFS 37. It's got 37K axles. It's a gooseneck heavy duty flatbed. It's a 102 by 35 plus 5. 35 on the flat, 5 foot dove. It's got your 5 foot flip over full width spring assisted ramps. Shown here primarily are two options. One would be the charcoal powder coat with the black wheels. And then of course the full width rhino ramps at the rear of the trailer. Let's take a walk around the trailer. Again, we'll show you all the standard features as well as a little better close up of those options. So again, it is a triple axle, three seven Ks, 21,000 pound rated. It's gonna weigh in at around 8,000 pounds. It's gonna give a net legal payload of about 13 plus your tongue weight. Tongue weight on a goose this size, you can figure it's gonna be at least 20%. So it's gonna give you about 4,000 pound of tongue weight going to give you about 13 trailer side and 4,000 or so uh, truck side give you about 17,000 pounds again you'll scale it get a better idea normally a longer trail like this your tongue percentage is going to go up a little bit and then triple axle will take it back down just a little bit let's take a look up front this has a two and five sixteenth inch uh, gooseneck coupler it is a spring-loaded uh, latch assembly it's got two set bolts it is a sealed cold weather rated wire harness, hence the blue color. Standard seven pin blade style plug, standard on most modern pickup trucks. It does have a breakaway battery box in the neck. Also notice the standard spare tire in the neck of the trailer. This unit's built on an I-beam frame and it also has the uh, I-beam neck, both the vertical and the horizontal safety chains and breakaway in the neck you also have a under neck gusset integrated safety latch nice idea dual 12k jacks are standard equipment of course you've got grease zerts on the jack also uh, spring loaded drop legs nice part about this style you've got an inner and an outer adjustment the inner adjustment comes down via the handle outer adjustment via the uh, the jack assembly no need to carry around cribbing and wood blocking and whatnot. Full width toolbox is standard, has a locking latch on the box, grease zerts on the three hinges to the back side. Neck gussets going from the vertical to the horizontal and then from the vertical to the outer side rail. So again, we do the, the uh, charcoal on this. This gives it a nice clean look, we think, makes it a little bit different than, uh, than most of the other stuff in the market. Full side steps are standard. Also the new bullet style LED lights. Lamar gives you a three year structural warranty. And of course your reflector tape going down the side. For tie downs like most of your deck overs, this is gonna have your rub rail, stake pockets, and then your chain spools between rub rails. Rub rails on this are roughly on two foot centers. So you have a tie down point roughly every 12 inches plus of course your rub rail running the whole length. So I believe the magic number on Lamar is gonna be 30 foot. At 30 foot or longer, you're gonna get the underframe bridge on this. Now, uh, the underframe bridge is designed, if you had a heavy concentrated load that was gonna take up a small footprint in the trailer, underframe bridge would help keep from stressing uh, the I-beam, just like a semi-rig. And then underneath, I'll show you in a second, has a torque tube. Torque tube would be more of an off-road application. Uh, if that trailer is gonna be rock inside to side, help keep it straight, keep from uh, flexing the trailer unnecessarily. Also, mid markers, standard equipment. Three axles, again, these are all 7K axles, eight on six and a half lug pattern. It's got the black mod wheel with a 235 80 R16. That's a load range E10 ply tire. Has the newer style forward adjusting brakes, also has uh, the newer Easy Lube hub, so behind the black cap there, there's a grease zert. Probably too cold to get to today. Actually, I can get it. So there's a grease zert behind there with grease. Uh, you can do it a couple ways. You can just put put it on and uh, give it grease till you see the new come out, or you can actually take this whole cap assembly off and, uh, and uh, clean the old grease out and then wait for the new. Also on your slipper spring, there's a wet bolt kit on it, so you can also give it uh, some grease as well so again we said the underframe bridge standard 
uh, I'm pretty sure 30 foot's a magic number. And then uh, a torque tube is gonna run from the front. You've got a center I-beam cross member. And then you'll see it runs pretty well back to your, uh, to your uh, axles. Then you also notice about where the torque tube is, the channel running side by side, help keep everything true. 16 on center on your floor. It's gonna be a two by eight pressure treated pine. So I've stood one ramp up and flipped one over. So again, I call these full width ramps. Every manufacturer seems to have a different name. Uh, I just imply that basically they cover the back. These have pretty much replaced the pop-up dovetail you used to see uh, 5, 10, 15 years ago. A lot of functionality. These are uh, sprung both ways. Also notice these have a tubular bumper. It's 4 by 8 tube. Also giving an extra set of stop turn tails on the side, extra set of markers on the outside. Tread plate back, give them a solid ramp when you flip it over now some manufacturers have actually not designed theirs to stand up these are you can uh, take these down the road in the stand up position and get the full 40 foot deck or you can flip them over if you want to use it as a 40 foot flatbed so another feature I want to point out the way they do the beaver tail it's actually plated uh, as well and then also, it's I-beam going all the way back to the back. So a lot of manufacturers on this, I shouldn't say a lot, but a fair amount, um, uh, do it a little bit different. This also has the self-cleaning tail instead of the wood at the rear. I've also done little details like put rubber bumpers at the back so they don't bang going down the road. You can see the bumper actually on that one. We like triple axles because they don't weigh a lot more than a tandem, uh, depending on the length, especially around the 30 foot length. Uh, relatively inexpensive way, and also uh, a nice way without adding a ton of empty weight to get a fair amount of extra payload when you need it. Uh, ideal trailer for the guy that always needs to haul maybe 12,000 pounds give or take but once in a while maybe he needs to carry some extra attachments or whatnot needs to bump his payload by a couple thousand pounds so again uh, ideal setup for uh, for somebody that just needs to get that extra weight if you were always going to carry uh, we'll say 16 17,000 pounds I would go with a tandem dual uh, just a little bit heavier duty setup, gonna be a little bit more empty weight, also gonna cost you uh, a decent bit more money, probably give or take $2,000, $1,500 minimum on a tandem dual. This is a nice tweener trailer for a guy that needs something, say, more than two 8K axles, uh, but doesn't want all the dead weight associated with a tandem dual. It's also a fairly stable trailer. Uh, unlike a tandem door, you're going to get a wider. You're going to get uh, see if, how well it's it. You're going to get a wider frame on this. Easiest way to tell you can see how wide the box is. You got a wider box normally. Uh, you got your wider frame. So again, fairly stable. Front and rear are slide axles. Uh, lose rubber just a little bit faster but again fairly stable fairly economical carry around a little bit less weight uh, a lot of your farmers like these a lot of hay haulers they want to throw uh, a little bit extra weight on they can without carrying too heavy of an empty trailer again weighs in about eight thousand pounds if you have any questions on this or any of our other trailers feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220 or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.